QuickBooks Online 2023, Bank Feeds, Add Remaining Transactions, and Bank Rules. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We started up in a prior presentation. Presentation! Using the 30 day free trial, we also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser to open the sample company. You can open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting three dots in the browser. Select incognito window, type into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one the bank feeds practice file is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. We're gonna be duplicating some tabs like we do every time. Right click on the tab up top to duplicate it. And then we're gonna right click again to duplicate it. It's going fast because we do this every time. Back to the tab to the middle. We're gonna open up our financial statements, reports on the left-hand side. The first one, of course, being the balance sheet, the balance sheet. And then if you're in the business view, by the way, the reports are in, the business overview on the left, and then the reports. So that's where they are at there. Tab into the right, go into the reports down on the left. This time, the profit and loss, the P and the L, Close in the hand boogie. Let's change that range. We're going from 010122 tab, 123122 tab, running it to refresh it. Tap to the middle, close that burger, scroll up to the top, change the range. 010122 tab, 123122 tab, run to refresh. Then open up the bank feeds. We're going to go to the tab to the left to do so. We're in the banking. We set up the bank feeds in a prior presentation, banking tab. If you're in the business view, by the way, the bank feeds are in the bookkeeping transactions, bank transactions. Okay, so now we're just, we've been adding all of our transactions. We're just gonna finish up and do some more kind of random of the transactions and add them in a way that you might do instead of focusing in on one particular rule or one particular kind of transaction. So we'll go through the rest of them here and just kind of add them and we'll add the rules as we go so that we can then do uh, the bank reconciliations related to the checking account. So if you add a bunch of data, like if, you add, if you're adding the data as you go, then of course, once you set the rules up, more of the items will either be populating on their own as time passes because you've trained the system to be smart. You've given it kind of an AI component, I guess. So it can like take things out of bank feed limbo and make them into the financial statements automatically. Or you're going to have a lot of stuff in here that already has basically the rules applied to it. And then you can apply out the rules. If you're uh, making a new account or you're entering a lot of data at one time, then of course, you're going to want to sort the data possibly by date, which is the default, but maybe more so by the bank detail because that will then give you the types of transactions that are lined up together so that you can then go through here and basically just pick up these uh, these transactions and make the relevant rules kind of as you go. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to try to pick up some of the rest of these. So we've got the a Amazon, Amazon service items. So I'm going to go into that and say there's an Amazon item. I think I already had an Amazon, a couple Amazons up top. Now, if this was for the same kind of Amazon income, I could use the same Amazon uh, customer in this case. But if it's something slightly different, maybe I say, okay, this is going to go into Amazon and a different, uh, I'm making a different vendor for it. And maybe I'll put it into a different uh, uh, income account. So I'm going to save it. 
and uh, I'm not going to put a class on these ones. You can add the class. We turned on the class tracking in a prior presentation and then just basically add the rules as we go. It's going to be a money in in the bank text. If I want it to be distinguished from the other Amazons, I'm going to pull in the information from the bank test text that will be distinguishing it. That means we're going to have the services apply to it. There's only one item it's going to apply the rule to because that's the only one we have here. And then it's going to be going to not the category of cost of goods sold, but I think I have an Amazon income. So we have Amazon book and Amazon prime. So maybe we have other Amazon like uh, affiliate marketing Amazon or something. So uh, let's go to let's go to say we have an income account and let's say it's an other income and let's call it M Amazon affiliate market team. I can't spell affiliate. I can't spell affiliate. What do you think? I am a genius. That's a crazy hard word. So let's save it. And then that looks good. So we'll save that. And then I can kind of check it. So that looks good. I'm going to add it. So that of course, if I go to the balance sheet, we'll have an increase to the checking account. If I run it here and the other side's going to the income statement where we have now have an, another item for Amazon affiliate marketing. Now these three Amazons, you might make them sub accounts of like a parent account of Amazon if you have these three uh, down here as sub accounts. So if you wanted to do something like that, I go to the tab to the right, right click, let's duplicate it, pull in this to the left. And you could say, maybe I should have those in the accounting tab down below. And chart of accounts, closing up the hand boogie, by the way, the chart of accounts in the business view, as we all know, at this point is under the bookkeeping, and then the manage and the chart of accounts, but I'm just pointing it out, just so we can practice just for practice. I know you know where it is. Okay, I just wanted to practice. So I'm going to make a parent account, just called Amazon, an income account, let's make those subs of them. I think that would look better in our financial statement. So we're going to get picky now. So now you're getting picky. Is that it? Yes, I'm getting picky. I want it to look good. So this is going to be uh, maybe other primary income. I'm just going to call Amazon and there it is. So let's save it. And then all the other Amazons, I'll go in here and make them subordinate, subordinate to the primary Amazon because that's how the Amazon people work. They got, they've got the primary leader Amazon lady, you know, like, like, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. What do you just do the, do the, stop talking, just do the thing. This is going to be Amazon parent account. That's what I'm trying to do. Like Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman's an Amazon person, lady, isn't she? Anyways, this, this is, going to go into the next one. This is going to be Amazon and then the next one is Amazon. Amazons and there we go. Okay, so now there'll be sub accounts. So let's check out what that does. What does that do? Let's check it out. I'll show you. So now we've got this sub account activity so we can collapse. Say, do I need, do I really need to break out the $9 I got from the affiliate marketing? Maybe I should just call it, you know, all Amazon. It doesn't seem very significant to break it out, but whatever. So then we've got the circle K, circle K random, random stop, most likely for a Coke or something. So I'm going to say, all right, circle K, strange things are afoot at the circle K. That's a vendor that's in Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, by the way, in case you're wondering, it's an old movie. So we're going to say this is going to be I don't know. This might be draws that I took out of there because it might have been for personal, personal stuff. So maybe meals and entertainment. I don't have meals and entertainment or draws. Let's make an account called meals and entertainment. The classic meals and entertainment. So we're going to say this will be an expense type of account. Let's call it entertainment in the entertainment industry. I like to say meal. So now for taxes, they might have broken this out a bit. So if you're trying to do this specifically for taxes, you want to kind of differentiate possibly entertainment and meals if you can, and then travel might be different, but I'm just going to call it meals and entertainment because it sounds cool because that's what I'm used to. Okay. 
And then we're gonna say, we can set a rule. Do I need a rule for that one? Do I go to circle K a lot? Maybe I won't set a rule this time because circle K, I might do something different next time. So then PayPal, this is a transfer. So this, this sh should be matched out to our income over here in the cash account. But let's just pretend like this one, you're, we're doing it the other way. We're waiting until it comes through in PayPal and then we're recording it as income. So then I would record it to whatever I got the income from in PayPal. Let's imagine this was like the YouTube revenue or Google YouTube. It's not, I don't think, but let's just pretend because I need to put it somewhere. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, hold on a second. This is going to be, let's call it PayPal transfer and then category. This is where I want to put the YouTube income. Boom. All right, so I'm gonna add that. So it's gonna be YouTube income. I'm not gonna make a rule for it, but if that's what I do every time, then I can make a rule for all those transfers that come in if they were all like YouTube money, which they're not, I'm just, this is just making this up. Okay, so these, the life insurance. So let's say this, let's say this is insurance. I'm gonna copy this and put this up top. I'm gonna to make it a different Primerica, Primerica life. And then I'm gonna say, okay, so this, is it is it business or personal? If it's a life insurance, I'm, I'm gonna assume maybe it's personal. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna put it into draws. I'm gonna say, this is something I took out of my business checking account, but it's personal, we'll say. And so then I'm gonna say, boom, and I can make a rule for that, make a rule. And wait, I'll tell you, you have to do it this way, QuickBooks. There's rules here. You've gotta do it the way I tell you to do it. I'm the one making the rules. I make the rules around here at QuickBooks. Dang it. At least QuickBooks listens to me sometimes. If I apply the rule, it applies to that one. Okay. So there it is. Let's save that one. And boom, adding it just to check that one out because it's a little bit different because we assigned it to a draw. So checking account goes down, but the other side went into not an income statement account, but draws. Draw because we said it was for personal use and that was the rationale of putting it into the draws. So there it is. And so no impact on the income statement is my point. That's what I'm trying to say. And then the other Primerica, let's say that this one, let's say that this one was some kind of insurance. Let's say it was liability insurance or something. So I don't have an insurance account. So let's say insurance, insurance, let's say. It's going to be, I'm just making this up. So don't, we're just going to say it's going to be insurance. Now you could have multiple different kinds of insurance. So you might have a parent account called insurance and then like liability insurance and possibly auto insurance and other types of insurance or, uh, because auto insurance might be somewhere else. So you might put auto insurance like under auto instead of under insurance. That one gets a little bit tricky. So you could have a, or you could just have a, an account for general insurance, liability insurance, or whatever it is as a standalone. I'm just gonna call it insurance as the generic here. And then we'll create a rule, rules. And then we're gonna say text, bank text contains Primerica 01. So we'll do that to distinguish it from any other. And two of them have been applied. So that, that looks good, good. And so let's save it and something's not quite another rule already exists with this name. So let's put a dot next to it or something. Why didn't it apply it out if another one already existed? You, you might want to go clean up the rules over there, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to select these two and then add them, accept, boom, they've been pulled in. Safe deposit box. So we'll say that that's some kind of investing thing. Let's say that this is going to be, uh, uh, hold on, safe deposit box as the vendor, I guess. And so we're going to say it's going to be investing. Let's just call it miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. Uh oh, they're going to make me spell that. I know how to spell miscellaneous. I'm going to say this is going to be expenses miscellaneous miscellaneous other other there it is and then i'm just going to call it miss see now it gave me the the word 
so I don't have to prove that I could spell it. But if they didn't give me the word right there, I would have spelled it right anyways. Because I know how to spell I could do that. It's not a hard word. Tell you what. Safe deposit box money out. This is going to be a bank text. It's going to be, I'll just say safe deposit box as the rule name. That's all I need. It's only applying to one. Okay. Movie B to the N. Let's add it. Now this one looks like a rule has been applied. So I'm good with that one. It's over the dollar amount. So it, that's fine. I'm going to add. I'm going to add. This one hasn't been categorized. SoCal Edison. Why? Isn't there a rule for that one? Why is this one not? Why is this not have been? Why is this not having been added with the rule? Rules, rules, rules. <laughs> Uh oh, that doesn't make no sense. I'm just, I'm not gonna get into it right now. I'm not getting into it right now. Just add it. SoCal. SoCal. Oh, this is Edison. The other one was the gas company. I get it. All right. See, you got it all upset for nothing. Okay. Okay. So this is gonna be utilities, let's say. I already have a utilities account set up and then we're going to let's create a rule for it and then we're going to say it's a money out and bank text let's just say it just needs the edison in there to make it happen making stuff happen testing the rule only applies to one all right let's do it then all right so there's that one's different than this one that's a gas company both SoCal. Let's add it. Add it. Add it. And then this one is going to be, let's say that was draws. Draws coming to our personal side. So I'm going to say category. Let's make this to the owner. I don't really, I could say owner. Owner. Did I, I thought I already had yeah, a vendor of an, of an owner. Drawing it out. I'm just going to call it draws. Draws boom customer boom i don't think i really want a rule for that one because even though it's somewhat standardized i could make a rule let's make a rule for it could i make a rule i'm going to say well hold on this is going to be draws transfer rule it's a money out rule so to make this one specific because i really have a dollar amount that's kind of specific so maybe i say i i'm not really reliant on the bank text so much as the amount so if the amount is equal to 75 and maybe the bank text has like robert in it then we'll apply it. what what has two maybe it needs to be negative 75 no it has to be amounts equal to okay so I have it now to 75 and I put the two steel here. And so that works. I think it's the capital letters I didn't have. All right, two have been applied. So that should be good. Let's save it. And then these two are Verizon. All right, I'm just gonna select all of them and say accept. So now we've cleaned out our stuff over here. And if I go to my financials, this is what we have constructed with the mainly transactions from the bank feeds. We'll take a look at the financial statements a little bit more later to just kind of look at what we've done, drilling back down in more of an auditing kind of system, going from what has been created, drilling back down to the source documents that have been constructed mainly from the forms that have been made from the bank feeds. And so, and then here's, you know, the income statement. So we'll go back in and kind of analyze this and then possibly do some bank recs and deal with that beginning balance issue uh, in the checking account with that first bank reconciliation.